Coming up on today's Airborne. The Sierra Nevada Corporation plans Dream Chaser flights for later this year. The FAA announces the first UAS test site is operational. And Air Racers 3D hits IMAX theaters. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Sierra Nevada Corporation Co-Program Director John Curry is reported to have said that they will conduct additional drop tests of their Dream Chaser spacecraft at California's Edwards Air Force Base in the fall of this year. According to an article published on the Parabolic Arc website, this will be an upgraded version of the vehicle used in the landing test last year. The article reports that NASA said it hopes to award the next round of contracts in August, which means key criteria must be met by that time. NASA has already amended the agreements and extended the current testing round from the April-May timeframe to August. Sierra Nevada Corporation, Boeing, and SpaceX are all vying for the contracts. The competition goes on as more private companies come closer to providing space missions for NASA. The FAA announced Monday that the first of six test sites chosen to perform unmanned air systems research is up and running. Tom Patton reports. The site became operational more than two and a half months ahead of the deadline specified for the program by Congress. The North Dakota Department of Commerce team has been authorized to begin using a Dragonfire X4ES small UAS at its Northern Plains Unmanned Aircraft Systems test site. The authorization is effective for two years and the team plans to begin flight operations during the week of May 5th. The main goal of this site's initial operations is to show that unmanned aircraft can check soil quality and the status of crops in support of North Dakota State University Extension Service Precision Agriculture Research Studies. Precision Agriculture is one of many industries that represent areas for significant economic opportunity and UAS industry growth. The site will also collect safety-related operational data needed for UAS airspace integration, which will help the FAA analyze current processes for establishing small UAS airworthiness and system maturity. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix Team KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. If there was ever a time to see a movie in the modern 3D format, this has got to be it. A new theatrical release of Air Racers 3D from 3D Entertainment Distribution is now showing at select IMAX theaters. This is the first IMAX film about the Reno National Championship air races and provides an up-close look at the intensity of air racing through the eyes of then-rookie pilot Steve Hinton Jr. with his modified P-51 Mustang Strega. The movie is playing now at the National Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida and the National Infantry Museum in Columbus, Georgia. On May 25th, select theaters like the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum's Lockheed IMAX Theater will have showings before the film rolls out in both 2D and 3D format at theaters over the coming 24 months. Air Racers 3D is recommended for all ages. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, 
Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Relaxing on the cool grass of a lake shore while watching airplanes drift by doesn't sound much like EAA Air Venture. That is, unless you've taken the time to visit the EAA seaplane base. Search EAA Seaplane Base Lakeside on Aero TV's news channel. We've found it hard to believe, but it's true. A 16-year-old boy is lucky to be alive after he stowed away in the wheel well of a Hawaiian Airlines jet, which flew from San Jose, California to Maui, Hawaii. A review of security camera footage showed the boy climbing a fence at San Jose Airport on Sunday morning. He was discovered by the FBI on the tarmac in Maui, carrying no identification. FBI spokesman Tom Simon said he climbed down out of the wheel well after the flight and was, quote, wandering around the airport grounds, end quote. The unidentified teen survived frigid temperatures and lack of oxygen at 38,000 feet on the five and a half hour flight. Simon said, quote, he was unconscious for the lion's share of the flight, end quote. The AP reports that the teen will not be charged with any crime and has been placed in the custody of Child Protective Services. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. A civil lawsuit has been brought against four former naval aviators for wearing their flight suits while pursuing post-military careers as consultants and motivational speakers. All four had worked for a consulting firm called Afterburner, which employs military fighter pilot imagery and jargon in its training curricula. The four fighter pilots left Afterburner and went on to form their own competing company, the Core Group which offers similar services. According to a report appearing in Military.com, Afterburner CEO Jim Murphy sued Core Group, saying they used business leadership concepts developed by Afterburner and for, quote, service mark and trade dress infringement. A judge ruled in favor of Afterburner and assessed damages of more than $788,000. Even Chuck Yeager jumped into this when he wrote on his Facebook page that, quote, Afterburner has sued a few people, claiming he owns the trademark for pilot flight suits, end quote. One of the core group members, John Borman, told Military.com, quote, Right now, I basically have to de-fighter pilot myself to stay in business, end quote. Wisconsin's recreational use statute was amended to include non-commercial aviation. But what does that mean and how does it apply to general aviation? Let's say you have a landing strip on your private property and would love to invite friends to fly in and use your strip. The question becomes, what liability do you incur by doing this? Many states have recreational use statutes that protect private property owners from liability for non-commercial recreational use of their property. However, these laws commonly did not reference private airstrips. The Recreational Aviation Foundation's Wisconsin State Liaison, Chuck Aldrin, 
reports that there are 177 private airports in the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics database, and many more that have not been registered with the FAA. Aldrin said, quote, the new language in the law protects owners of these private airstrips, end quote. Aldrian added that the RAF wishes to thank AOPA for their help in promoting this legislation. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.